If you've ever had a pair of white soccer cleats and you know how difficult they can be to keep clean, but what if I told you that there was two simple steps that you could follow to keep them as white as possible for as long as you own them? Here's how. Step one, grab the box with the shoes inside. Step two, and this is very important, take the box, put it in a safe place and walk away. Follow those two simple steps and your white boots will stay white forever. What's going on guys, Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com bringing you my review plus on feet video of what I personally think is the best looking boot of 2018 so far, the Nike Premier 2 in this gorgeous white and metallic gold colorway. Simple styling, kind of a little bit more of a traditional look as well, but the white and gold combo always looks incredible in my opinion. And the simple design of the Nike Premier 2, I really think highlights that white and gold color combo. So we'll take a closer look at the colorway in today's video. We'll talk tech specs and performance because from a value for money perspective, the Premier 2 is actually a really, really solid option. And of course, we'll take a look at how they fit and feel on feet as well, essentially covering everything that you need to know. So if you are interested in a pair for yourself, I'll leave a little pop-up on screen or you can click the first link down below. That'll take you to the review page on my website where you'll find buy it now links with exclusive SR4U coupon codes where you'll be able to pick these up below their normal $110 retail price. You'll be able to pick them up for under a hundred bucks, which is pretty astonishing for this good of a shoe. Oh my gosh, they're already dirty. Took them out of the box for 30 seconds and the liner is already dirty. As far as extras are concerned, the Nike Premier 2 is kind of its own standalone line and it's only made up of one model. I personally would consider it to be high end, but it doesn't come with a string bag like other top end boots from Nike. You do get some extras though. I don't normally show you this. You'd get this with the Legend 7 as well, but it's basically just a little tag right here that says that they're made out of kangaroo leather, nothing too fancy. Also, this sticker was on the insole. Starting off with the colorway and design of the shoe, I think Nike's done a really good job with the Nike Premier 2. It's not drastically different from the original. It still has the older style Nike swoosh, the Nike across the back, but they've definitely given us more colorways as general releases versus what we had in the Nike Premier 1. And the addition of the fold over flap tongue, while it has really no performance benefit, if anything, it's just adding bulk across the top of the foot. I love the styling of it. It really gives it that retro vibe and it kind of ties it in to those classic Tiempo Legend 1 and 2 models that are obviously no longer around. As far as this colorway is concerned, it's gorgeous. Pretty much all white except for some subtle gold accents in the form of the older style Nike swoosh that I love that the two swooshes are connected across the back of the shoe. That to me is always a really cool styling cue on this particular model. The gold Nike branding across the heel, which honestly I think it probably would have looked better if it was solid white rather than more gold, but this definitely does not look bad. And then the gold embroidered swoosh right here on the tongue, little gold hit there on the insole as well, but that's pretty much it. Everything else that you see is white, which means that these are gonna look dirty very, very quickly. White K leather, white laces, white tongue, white insole, even white synthetic suede for the lining, which is gonna be next to impossible to clean. And the sole plate is solid white as well with translucent stud tip. So after about 20 minutes, they're never gonna look the same, but honestly, I think it might be worth it just based on how good they look. Even dirty white boots, in my opinion, don't look that bad. And if you're giving me my first choice of color for any soccer cleat of any kind, white as a base color is my personal favorite. I love blacked out boots as well, but white, especially when they're clean, just looks incredible. Let me know what you guys think of the look down below in the comments. Now, when it comes to fit, feel, and overall quality, I think a lot of this younger generation of soccer cleat consumers, they really fascinate themselves with the latest things, whether that's a knitted upper, a mid-cut design, laceless technology, whatever it might be, the newest thing is kind of what they're most interested in. But at the same time, products like this still exist. And the reason why products like this exist is because people who have been around for a little bit longer, perhaps are even a little bit older, they know how good these simple, pure kangaroo leather soccer shoes can be. They're comfortable, they're soft, the feel, the touch, the experience is unlike anything else. And I've said on this channel before that I think everybody who's serious about the game needs to have tried an Adidas Copa Mundial at least once in their lifetime. But given that the Copas have gone up in price, they definitely are better quality than this. But at the same time, the Copa is one of those shoes that it legitimately is almost too old school at this point versus everything else that's out there. Whereas with the Nike Premier, you're getting a quality kangaroo leather upper, you're getting the simple pure design, but the shape, the feel, the weight of the shoe is along the lines of other modern shoes. So it's not too far out there versus something like a Copa Mundial. And considering the price point that these are at right now, 
Honestly, I think if you're on the market for a really good deal and you're curious about trying out a leather shoe or you just want a really good leather shoe for a good price, the Nike Premier is a very, very solid option. The upper is made almost entirely out of kangaroo leather. And I know that when I initially reviewed the Nike Premier 2 in that launch black and white color, which is still available by the way, that I criticized the quality, not saying that it was bad, but saying that it wasn't quite as good as the original Nike Premier. I'm starting to believe that I just got a bad pair because I've gotten several of the other colorway releases since then, including this one. And the quality is just as good as what we had on that original Nike Premier. And again, kind of surprising considering the $110 price point. It's super soft kangaroo leather, really, really flexible, and it feels even better after a couple of wears when they break in and mold to the exact shape of your foot. It's all kangaroo leather through the forefoot, toe box, and midfoot area. The only parts that are synthetic is this strip around the heel, which is not a big deal because there's an internal plastic heel counter there anyways. The fold over flap tongue, that piece is leather, but the tongue itself, basically from here down, is a synthetic leather material, which is a bit of a shame, but it still feels pretty good. And again, once the shoes are broken in, it softens up nicely and it matches the thickness of the rest of the shoe. So the overall touch on the ball that you get here is that soft, slightly padded kangaroo leather sensation, but they definitely don't feel overly bulky. And again, if I'm comparing them to the Copa Mundials, they do feel a lot thinner. The laces, of course, run down the middle of the shoe, pretty straightforward there, and it does have the fold over flap tongue that attaches by way of Velcro and actually stays in place remarkably well, all things considered. The shoe is, of course, low cut as a shoe like this should be, in my opinion. Nothing too fancy about this area at all. Internal plastic heel counter, like I mentioned, and then the liner, one of the best in the business, in my opinion, synthetic suede, good amount of padding, great lockdown, great comfort, nothing to complain about there whatsoever. The insole is fully removable, and in my opinion, this is the best insole lining material you'll find on any top end Nike boot right now. You can see up close, it has a little bit of a texturing to it with the foam on the underside, and you can see it's not a regular mesh. It's got a little bit of a kind of rough, almost sock-like texturing to it. I don't wanna call it rough, it doesn't feel like sandpaper, but it does remind me a little bit of the insoles you'd find on the very expensive Made in Japan Mizuno products, where it is actually kind of like a sandpaper gritty texturing that grips the underside of your sock, much more effectively, by the way, than the Nike Grip liner that you find on their current top end models, where the Nike Grip honestly just feels like regular mesh. There's nothing about it that feels special at all. This legitimately does work in terms of preventing slippage though. And then it's just a regular layer of this black foam. Nothing too fancy, but definitely one of the better insoles within the Nike brand right now. The sole plate and stud pattern, just like the rest of the shoe, is pretty straightforward design-wise. It's a standard TPU plastic material with really good flexibility. The stud pattern is a firm ground stud pattern Pattern. They make this in a soft ground anti-clog variation as well. I wouldn't necessarily recommend wearing these on artificial grass, not because the stud pattern would be dangerous, but more so for the sake of the durability of the shoe. You can get away with it. I'm just not sure how well the shoes would hold up long term on an AG plane surface. So I would stick to using these on natural grass if you do plan on picking these up. The studs, as you can see, are pretty much all conical studs all the way through, aside from the one oval shaped stud as a support stud in the middle of the forefoot. And then these little kind of toe picks here at the edge of the sole plate that honestly, I don't think do much of anything. As far as a firm ground stud pattern is concerned, you can see that they are a little bit shorter than average, I would say. So nice and close to the ground, nice and stable, plenty of freedom to twist and pivot because of the conical shape. Definitely not overly aggressive in terms of the amount of bite you're gonna get when pushing off, but they definitely get the job done. And I think that the stud pattern and sole plate as a whole really does suit the overall design of the Nike Premier 2. As far as weight is concerned, in a size 9.5 US, the Nike Premier 2 weighs in at 8.4 ounces, which is on par with other modern top end soccer cleats. I think something that weighs exactly the same would be the Adidas Predator 18 plus laceless boot. Those are gonna be right in and around 8.4 ounces in the same size as well. So these are not gonna feel heavy on your feet. They're not gonna feel super light either. And again, considering the style of shoe that it is, if we are comparing it to the Copa Mundial as an example, these are a lot lighter and are gonna have a more modern feel than some of the other traditionally styled soccer cleats that are available right now. So as you can see, I swapped out the stock white laces, which look fine, but they're gonna get dirty really quickly for some wide gold reflective SR4U replacement laces, which match 
all the gold accents on the boots really nicely, look quite cool. But even once the boots get dirty and the laces get dirty, the gold's just gonna look a lot better than the white, at least in my opinion. So if you are interested in some replacement laces for yourself, the website to go to is www.sr4ulaces.com. There'll be a little pop-up on screen as well as a link down below in the description. So if you're interested in a pair, be sure to go ahead and check that out. If comfort is a number one priority for you, then you're gonna love the feel of the Nike Premier 2. The leather is soft out of the box. The sole plate really doesn't have any stiffness to it. And they're only gonna get softer as you wear them in. That really is the beauty of these full kangaroo leather soccer cleats. The more you wear them, the more comfortable they're gonna get. They mold to the exact shape of your feet. The heel liner is great, no slippage whatsoever because of the synthetic suede that they've used. And again, it's just a super, super comfortable shoe out of the box, but they only get more comfortable with time. As far as the width is concerned, because they're leather and because they are going to stretch, these are gonna fit just about anybody, even if you do have wider feet after a little bit of break-in time. And as far as sizing is concerned, I know it sounds weird, but they run about a half size small. So instead of wearing my usual size nine US, I bump it up to a 9.5 and the fit and length is absolutely perfect. The length actually runs short on these as they do on the Nike Tiempo models as well. So if you're coming from the Tiempos, I'd recommend staying with the same size. If you're coming from most other lines, I'd recommend going a half size up in order to achieve the best possible fit. So in conclusion, the Nike Premier 2 is by no means perfect. If you're looking for that super locked in responsive sensation, these are simply not going to provide that. It's not the most aggressive traction in the world, but on the positive side of things, the quality is great. The comfort is phenomenal. They feel extremely natural on your feet. I think the styling is top notch. It's one of the best looking boots on the market right now. That's a personal preference thing. And for the money, I think you're gonna have a hard time finding a better quality leather shoe. So it really does depend on what you're looking for, but if you are after something more traditional, simple, and pure to wear on your feet, you cannot go wrong with the Nike Premier 2. Anyways, guys, that is it for my review of the Nike Premier 2. Again, if you're interested in a pair of these for yourself, you can click the first link down below. That'll take you to the review page on my website, where you'll find buy it now links with exclusive SR4U coupon codes. You'll be able to pick these up below their normal $110 retail price in all the currently available colorways. If you have any questions, as always, leave them down below in the comments, and I'll do my best to get an answer out to you as soon as I possibly can. Subscribe if you haven't already for daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear. You can find all my social media information linked down below in the description as well. Other than that, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. And as always, thanks for watching.